Kia ora, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and welcome to episode 6 of AI. In this episode, we're going to implement a ton of stuff, AI shooting, player ragdolls, a low health effect, and the kill cam that you just saw here. It's going to be awesome. Let's get into it. You can check out the previous episode in the link above. Here's a quick recap of where we got to in the previous episode. The AI can now aim at the player using a custom weapon IK constraint. Before the AI can fire at the player, there needs to be some modifications done to the Raycast weapon script, because currently it is handling the input, but the input should only be handled by the player, not by the agent. And this Raycast weapon script should be used by both the agent and the player. So the input handling needs to be moved outside of the weapon and into the active weapon script. This allows the player to basically check that the input has been pressed and then call start firing on the weapon and also check when the input is released and then uh, call stop firing on the weapon. The agent will do a similar thing, but inside the state machine instead. So just testing everything out here, just making sure that the, uh, the player can still shoot the weapon because uh, that's basically what we changed. And yeah, everything looks good. Cool. The next modification to the weapon script is to remove the Raycast destination transform object. It's a little bit awkward and it's easier to just pass a target position into the weapon. This, uh, this target position needs to be passed all the way down to fire bullets and finally we can replace the Raycast destination dot position with the target. So we can remove that there because we no longer have that property and instead we just pass in the crosshair target position like this. This just makes it easier for the AI to uh, introduce sort of variation to the target position, which we'll get to uh, pretty soon. Cool. And finally, it is time to shoot at the player. So open up the AI weapon script and implement the update function. So here we just need to update our equipped weapon because we weren't doing this before. So just check that we have a target and a weapon. Now calculate the target from the current target position plus the IK offset. And then we can just call current weapon dot update weapon passing in the delta time and the target position. To prevent the AI shooting midway through the equip animation, I'm just going to introduce a new boolean and just set this to true after the animation is finished playing. And inside update, we can just check if that has been set. Now we need to create a new function called set firing, which will call current weapon dot start firing or current weapon dot stop firing, and this will be called from the state machine. And finally, we can call that set firing function just when we enter the attack player state. This is uh, pretty basic and the agent will now fire directly at the player. Uh, we'll get to tactical sort of combat selection and stuff later in the series, but for now we just need to get all of the kind of fundamental elements in place. So if we open up the AI weapon script, we can now introduce some inaccuracies uh, pretty simply just by offsetting the target amount by a random vector multiplied by the inaccuracy amount. And I'm going to set the inaccuracy on the agent to 0.4 just because it's a value I've tested before. And this will just produce some variation in the bullet direction. Cool. So currently the bullets are actually intersecting with the player's character controller, like its capsule. Uh, so it's not very accurate to use that. And instead I'm gonna create a ragdoll for the player as well, just exactly the same way that we did for the AI, basically. It's kind of a no brainer. It means we can ragdoll the player later on. And we also get hitboxes at the same time. One thing I am gonna do is create a new physics layer called hitbox. And I'm gonna put all of the hitbox objects inside the health script where we're creating these, move all of the hitbox objects into the hitbox layer. And this will let us raycast directly at the hitboxes only and avoid raycasting against the player's character uh, capsule. To specify which layers the weapon should intersect with, we need to create a new public property called the layer mask and pass this as a parameter to the physics.raycast function. Now on each of the weapon prefabs, we need to set those layers on the layer mask. So I'm gonna set them to default and hitbox for each of the weapons. So default is the static environment, like the walls and stuff, and hitbox is obviously the hitboxes of the characters. In the physics settings, we can specify which layers the hitboxes collide with, which is the ragdoll limbs effectively. So I'm just setting other ragdoll limbs and the ground. Now we can see that the raycasts are colliding against the hitboxes rather than the capsule. Cool, so now it's time to add the health to the player, except our health script is currently got too much information about the agent, so we just need to move this into a subclass, and the health script will remain a base class. So create three virtual functions, one called on start, on death, and on damage, passing in the direction for the latter two, and uh, just call on start the end of the start function, call on damage inside take damage, 
and on death inside the die function. And this will basically let us move all of the AI specific logic, uh, push it down into a subclass. So create a new script called AI health and this script will inherit from the health class. So we can just implement those three functions that we created before. And instead of uh, virtual, it's now gonna be override because we're in a subclass. And we can basically just pull out the AI logic from our common base class and move that down into the on death function of the AI health. And here we just need to get a reference to the agent inside on start. Finally, we can now remove the agent from the health class. Awesome. Now just add the AI health script to the agent and remove the, the common base health script because we want it to be AI specific, which does the ragdoll uh, sort of logic. Cool, so yeah, just testing everything still works. Yep, the AI still ragdolls. To make the player ragdoll, we're gonna add a ragdoll script to the player, which we created in episode two and create a new script called player health which will inherit the health class. So we can just override those three functions we just created. And inside on start, we can get a reference to the ragdoll script. And inside on death, we just call ragdoll.activate ragdoll. Just filling out some default values here for the player. And uh, we get that blink effect for free because it's implemented in the base class, which is quite nice. Cool, so our player now ragdolls. Uh, the camera is still a bit weird, which we'll fix up in a minute. But first we're going to make the player drop the weapon it has equipped by copying the drop weapon function from the AI weapons and pasting that into the active weapon script. We just need to modify it very slightly here and just set the equipped weapon at the active weapon index to null. Now inside our player health script, it's super easy, just inside the on death function, uh, we can just call weapons.drop weapon. So if I now go and get a weapon and let the AI shoot me, we can now see the weapon fell to the ground, which is good. So the next thing is just fixing up that weird uh, camera issue, which is pretty simple. We just need to disable the aiming script on the player. So just get that inside on start of the player health script and just disable it on death. Now to create a low health effect, we're gonna use a red vignette and just modify the intensity when the player's health gets low. So inside the player health script, we just wanna get a reference to the post-processing profile, uh, which is called a volume profile. And this profile is stored on the volume object, which is normally attached to the camera. Just make sure you have the unity engine.rendering and rendering universal namespaces at the top of your file. And we can get the vignette from the post-processing profile by calling try get passing the vignette as an out parameter. And we can calculate the health percentage using one minus because when we're at full health, we want zero intensity. And just set the intensity of the vignette to uh, the, the percentage that we calculated. Now when the AI shoots the player, uh, we can just see the red vignette slowly creeping in at the edges, which looks quite cool. And for the kill cam, I'm gonna create a Cinemachine target group camera and switching over to game mode, uh, this target group camera, it, you can assign multiple objects. So here I'm assigning the, the agent and the character and I'm assigning a slightly less weight for the agent and just increasing the radius. Uh, so in the game view, we can basically preview what this is gonna look like. Once you're kind of happy with it, just set the priority down to zero so it's off by default. So now I'm creating a camera manager object and inside this camera manager object, I'm just adding a new script called camera manager. And this script is basically going to hold all of the cameras in the scene and just kind of, I'm going to create functions which let you switch between them. For now, I'm just going to store the kill cam, uh, but down the road, this might be expanded. Uh, so I'm going to create a new function called enable kill cam and here just set the priority to something higher than any other camera in your scene. Now inside the player health script, um, oh yeah, I just assigned the reference there. Inside the player health script, we can just get a, a reference to the camera manager and uh, inside on death, we just call that enable kill cam function. And that basically, yeah, is just going to switch over to this kill cam mode. And also I forgot to apply a force on the ragdoll before, so I'm just doing that here as well. And testing all of this out, 
when the player dies the kill cam should become active awesome looks cool and the very last thing I wanted to do was just stop the AI shooting at the player when the player is already dead. So I'm going to do that by deactivating the weapon, which I've just copy and pasted the activate and equip weapon functions, just inverting the bulls. And also just inside deactivate weapon, we just clear the target and set fire into false. Now uh, inside the health script, we just create a function called is dead, which just checks if the health is less than zero. And inside the attack player state, we can now check if the player is dead and if the player is dead, then we enter the idle state. When the agent enters the idle state, we'll deactivate the weapon. So inside the enter function, we can just call weapons.deactivate. And also clear the nav mesh path, which is just prevents the AI from walking towards the dead player as well. And also I'm just doing it early out inside the update function if the player is dead. Cool, so final tests for this is, yeah, just check. Cool, so now the AI puts the weapon away when the character is dead. Nice. And that's it for this video, guys. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe to stay tuned to the next videos. Thanks to all the Patreon supporters this month. Everybody listed here, you guys are totally awesome. Uh, thank you very much for all your support. It's very generous, really appreciate it. If you are interested in getting the project files associated with these videos, then head over to Patreon and check out the, the different tiers. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. We'll see you in the next video. Kakite.